So I finally have a day off. And I'm just getting to chores. Laundry. And this is how I do laundry. I actually just cut this barrel in half. I was using five gallon barrels. But I could only do so much. And today I wanted to do all my laundry because I usually don't get to do all of it. Two loads and five gallons. And between doing everything else, it doesn't get a lot done. So with these barrels, I can get a lot more done. And what I usually do is one with the laundry detergent and then two rinses. And I'm trying this my water barrel that I use for the chickens and for laundry and anything else, the rainwater collection. It's kind of dirty, but that's fine for what it does. I mean, it's not dirty, it's just... It hasn't been filtered or anything. So I've built a platform to get this one, and I have another one to raise them up about that high so I can better get the water out. So I'm cleaning some of this up while the clothes soak between agitation. And I'm trying to put tools together for work. And I put a new clothesline up, and I need to burn some wood. And it's never ending, but having clean clothes is a must. And particularly when you're working around the public and co-workers, uh, it's, you know, kind of a socially nice, social nicety to not be stinky for your people around you. But since the laundry does require a lot of, requires a lot of work, so anybody I think who lives off grid like this, I think could tell you, tend to use clothes more than once a day. Just because you wore a t-shirt doesn't mean you can't wear it tomorrow because you just can't have enough clothes and you don't have enough space. You don't have enough time to do all the laundry, especially now that I'm working full time, which this weekend I work nights until morning. And yesterday some co-workers wanted to go raffling. I got off work, I went to work at midnight Saturday night and work until 8 a.m. And I had co-workers that wanted to go rafting because we are a rafting company and it's free to us. So, see, I'm just getting, this is like a winter fleece pullover. And I'm just getting around to washing because it was not a necessary thing to have in the summer. So I'm just trying to get it off. I'm trying to leave as much of the dirty water in the dirty water as I can. But we went rafting on the, uh, the Illinois River, and uh, that was good. That was a good time. It's the first time I've really taken a break between work, recovery, and working around this property. So I think it's necessary once in a while to get off, off the treadmill and do something a little different. So stage two on the wrench. There's still a lot of dirt coming out. But this definitely works. And this thing is actually pretty cheap. I forget what I paid for. It was like maybe 25 bucks. But it doesn't actually. Good job. The agitation just takes a little work. And it's not like I can run a washer and dryer out here. So, and we think historically, the 1600s, people weren't washing their clothes. They would literally take a brush and brush their clothes to get the dirt off the surface. But as far as washing out the smells, no, they didn't do that. And come back to America, the pioneers, they were hand washing, stringing the laundry up. And it does not get them as good as a washing machine that runs for an hour. does a pretty good job. I so I do two rinses and I do let them soak like between agitations and I'll come back in 10 minutes and I'll do it some more. But the next step doing the laundry is not most exciting or manliest thing to do. 
but it's a necessity, so it's something a man should know how to do. I figure if I smoke a cigar while I'm doing it, it'll seem more manly to me. Because nothing is wasted around here. Of the garden. Yeah, the garden doesn't really need watering today, but I'm not going to waste this water. Even though it has a detergent in it, I use an all natural detergent so it doesn't bother me putting it into the, uh, the garden here. Which, while we're here, let me show you. So I've been, pr I've been pruning leaves off to keep the, the buds clear so the insects can see that in the past I have not done that and I learned that's actually really good because as you can see I just harvested yesterday and that was too small to take yesterday and now it's perfect. Another one, another one. It's this one little garden, these two little flower beds here, if, if you saw back when I built these. They're maybe three foot by ten foot, so there's two of those. Have been producing so much that even my chickens are tired of eating squash and zucchini. And there's some more. That's perfect size right there for eating. So I took, I don't know, half a dozen cucumbers out of here yesterday. And a couple squashes, a couple of zucchini, and I need to take some more today. Like cucumbers right there. And these things are growing incredible. And this is just cheap topsoil dirt from Walmart. $1.58 a bag, you don't get a lot in it, like three quarters of a cubic foot. Tomatoes are coming on, I did not trellis these or box them or anything. Oh, look at that, look at that. I got peppers coming in, jalapenos. I've been waiting for that. And these are bell peppers, I believe, over here. Still waiting for that to come in. Oh, oh, these were not ready to take yesterday, but obviously they are today. So I need to start pickling. I need to start getting some, making some pickles. But yeah, this garden's actually doing incredibly well. All right, let's do a quick update on the chickens as I have gotten some work done on the coop. There you go, chicken. I see you. So the chickens are happy. I got the uh, the run all finished up. See, so you got the board in there. I got the door done. I got this end done with a little door in it down here. And they've been in really, they like it. And I've got the bigger feeders, so I don't have to feed so often. Oh, and they get upset about everything, because they're chickens. The chickens get upset about everything. Because the sky is falling. How are you doing? Water. I gotta get some more water down here. You know you have lots of water up top. Charles. Charles. We can't see you, Charles. Come here. Come here, Charles. There you are. So I think they're getting trained to go back in at night. Uh, the first couple of nights took me about a half an hour to catch them all. Well, most of them went up. It's like last eight that really got me. But I'm going to go ahead and get their water filled up. Hey, Charles. What are you doing? Hey, little girl. So these small waterers are a pain. I need to get two more big ones like I got up top. Once they're down below, they don't seem to want to go back up. But this is the second time I've filled this water up today. And upstairs, it's still completely full. And they are curious. They act like they haven't had water in months. And I just filled that. But they're getting used to going up at night. The last two nights they've done it on their own. But one night... One night was a thunderstorm and they were scared. Um, they went right up on their own. And I closed the door. They don't quiet down until I close that door. They're still all panicky. Like something's going to come in and get them. The, but... Last night they went all in by themselves, so I was happy about that because half an hour chasing one chicken around. Actually, 10 minutes for one chicken, 20 minutes for the other five. 
that was a real pain. But got a few more things left to do before this is completely done, like paint. But I need before winter, I need to make a door that will go up here that I can raise up. I want to be able to give them more shade in the summertime, so I'll make this raise up and lock into place. But I need to be able to cut the wind down in the winter time. And then down here is the back of the nesting boxes. They're not. I was told you have to keep them covered until they're ready to start laying eggs. Once you see a couple eggs, then it's time to open them up. So. I've been leaving these closed. I need to make a door that will open down so I can get in and get the eggs. But I got a couple months before that has to happen. And then of course I want to paint the whole thing. So the issue I need to fix today is I still have quite a bit of water in this tank, but I can't get to it. Because the grounds, oh, I just got a little bit coming out. Nah, it stopped. I can't get it out because that tank's not high enough. So now it'll come out because it's on the ground. See if it goes, because you got it flowing. See how it lasts. Um, so that's why I'm going to raise this up about 16 inches. So it costs the area here where I'm putting the platform. I had that old foam that I was using for a bed in the truck and uh, took it up and it was ants. A lot of ants. So now I know where the ants were coming from, getting in to my camper. So fortunately I had bought some ant killer. I don't like putting it down because someday the chickens are going to be free ranging out here. But um, I had to take care of them. They're, they're coming in and I need to break this back and I didn't want to just disperse them and have five more ant colonies come out of it. But this is the... Oh, I was gifted some wood and some sheet metal from a uh, co-worker who was cleaning up his property and he's like, I'll just, he says he had a whole lot of miscellaneous stuff so I put some together for Cribbon to put the water tanks on. Just use what I had, uh, it was all free except for the nails and screws. So that actually is working. That's also where I got the wood for the door here and the door on the back of the chicken coop. And as you can see, I had some PVC pipe. So I bought the fittings. So I'm gonna make some chicken uh, feeders off of those. And I get some more fittings to make the second one. I just wanted to make sure I had the right stuff that I needed for the first one. Make sure it worked so I wasn't wasting money. Alright, next thing I need to try to take care of is moving this barrel and leveling this area out and getting that, this platform in here and getting the barrels on top of that, which means I should open the spigot on that one to empty the other barrel completely. So I want to clean that out. I got most of the water out of it. I think before I put them back, I'm going to clean them out, get some bleach in there, and just clean them out. I think it'll be good to do that once in a while. And I don't need this stuff anymore.
think that's going to be good enough. As this is still a temporary situation being over here until I start building infrastructure down there. Um, hopefully I'm only going to be in this spot for another month or so. It all depends on how much time I have to work over there. Yeah, I kind of overbuilt this, but it's the materials I had. that'll work. I'd like to connect the barrels but I don't have the connector for it right now. It's got a bleach water mixture. that sit there for a little while and then I'll rinse it out. So I think, I think I've shown this before. Okay so I just bleached out the inside let it sit for a while and I rinsed it out and I use this fiber fill. this And that helps to keep any particles out of there. There's a lot of pollen around here. And that still gets through. No matter what I do, some of the pollen gets through. But that's feel pretty tight and when it gets water in it'll be a little more sturdy. I need that like right there for the water coming off of here. Just about like that. Now I'll do the same thing to the other barrel. Which I haven't been getting water out of the barrel, it's been collecting it but it's sitting so low I can't actually get it out of there. So now I'll have two barrels once I get them connected. So I thought I didn't have the parts I needed to connect these two barrels. But then I found this in my parts. I went, wait a second, why did I buy that? Then I remembered over the winter time I did buy the parts I needed. And this is one of the two through the barrel connectors that I bought along with two pieces of galvanized steel pipe and I have everything I need here oh, I have everything I need here 
to connect these two barrels. So I'm going to go ahead and get it done. All I need to do is drill two one inch holes, put my thread tape on and connect them up. And these barrels will be connected and I'll be using both barrels. So I won't be having watching water flowing over the top of either one of the barrels. This is great. This is great. I'm going to get it done. I might make this a separate video. I don't know, but I'll try to do it quick and include it. Okay, so I did the second one with the 15 16 or I'm sorry, the second one I did with one inch um, drill bit. And it went a lot easier, but it, it did not tighten in as well as with the 15 16 and sanding it out. But, it'll work. All right, well this is very this is very exciting here. I have the two barrels attached. I still have a hole in the top of this one which I don't need anymore. I will get a um, lid for that which I'll probably just take a piece of tarp right now and bungee it around the top because I don't need any more exposed holes than necessary. It'll all fill up from here. I do have a shut off for some reason but it helps to connect them at least. If I want to shut it off, I can. Got a hose that's now higher than my buckets that I use. And I'm all good. This is exciting. This was going from 45 gallons to 90 gallons of water. So I will feel a little more secure on my water. And I said, I don't use this for drinking at this time. I only use it for um, doing the laundry, feeding the chickens and things like that and cleaning various things. But I can make another hose to fit on here and I can pull from this side as well. And I have all the fittings I need to make the other hose. So this is awesome. This has been so far a good day and it's only about 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And the laundry is done, the chickens are fed and watered, new water barrel situation. I had to keep what I could until it rains uh, just to feed the chickens because I don't want to use my actual drinking water to do that. So now I can see I filled my cart up with the scraps. I'll take those over and I think I'm going to go ahead and drag them over to that pile of wood way over there and go ahead and burn that up.